um, I guess I should pause the recording until we have a quorum. Just a sec. Since we have okay, so we can do this pretty quickly. Okay, so we should make the statement that uh, this is a meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. I am Julianne Applegate, the co-chair, joined by uh, Matt Holloway, also co-chair. I think we just did. We just lose Cody, um, and that this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the town website. Um, and we need to do a roll call. So Christy. I can't hear. Yeah. Very good, thank you. Matt. Here. Yep, Rachel. I'm here. Cody. I'm here. Wonderful, thank you. Yes. Okay. So as Matt was saying, we, um, we did not have any, um, appeals requests for reconsideration. Um, and, uh, that's such a, re a relief considering, um, just the, the many, many grants and the many that we, we, you know, didn't have the information that we, we officially needed to move forward. So uh, I guess the summary is where we were with the numbers last time is, is good. Um, there we Rachel, we do have additional funds to push over to the Restless Books grant um because um one of those three grantees um that we were trying to get the final grant report for for 2023 did not come through by the end of the year. So I think that frees up 400 bucks. Great. And Matt, who is not available, was saying he wanted to go over LCC. Um, and I really don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. So, I'll speak to it really quick. Uh, unless anybody has any questions about the um, the slate. But, but the slate was, um, we have not notified awardees yet. That's going to come up after this meeting, uh, but we are past the 15 day reconsideration time. So everything is good for the, um, for this year's grant. So I think if we haven't given ourselves a round of applause, let's, let's do that quickly now. Cause that was a, that was a bear and a, and a, is a, is a bear of a season. So we got through it. Um, and now the fun part of, of sending out notification letters begins. Um, so what I wanted to just bring up to the group today, and, and this is not something that we, in my opinion, need to vote on um, just because it's a decision we made last year, but we we could if we wanted to. Um, so last year, as you'll remember, we set aside $7,500 to create the Spring into Arts block party. Um, the Downtown Amherst Foundation slash bid was not able to pull that off. They had they backed out kind of late. They had a staffing issue and and we're not able to pull it off. So we voted at the time to hold that money for this year to do a new Spring Into Arts grant. Um, however, the idea emerged from our discussion from Cody to apply some of that money to the fall block party. So we applied 2,500 to the fall block party and we held a showcase stage there. We had um, six or seven grantees who performed on the stage uh, Julianne and a few others, uh, Rachel was there, um, uh, facilitated a, an info table. Um, we used some of that money to purchase, uh, some, some t-shirts and some other sort of merchandise, um, to support, uh, our activity. And we were able to get the word out quite a bit for ACC. So that leaves, um, about $4,200 remaining from that original 7,500 that we put aside last year. Um, the bid again is not going to be able to pull off a spring into arts so that that's something i think a good idea that we just don't have the staff for um you know it's something that that i think we should continue this conversation about regarding you know having town staff support um you know because i think i mean angela with her responsibilities in paul's office is just not going to be sort of the active liaison that that other um councils have and that's you know i think we're just lucky to have her because she has great influence with the town manager um but we we do have the opportunity again to join with the bid on the fall block party. 
And, you know, I think tentatively, there's no reason to think we would use a different amount than the 2,500. That's what I, you know, I, I did communicate that to them informally that that's, you know, what we were planning to, to propose to, to apply to that. So that's, that would be the 2,500 um, that I think, you know, technically we, we could or should vote about, discuss about now. Um, certainly, you know, I think was, was one of the bigger successes that I've been a part of, you know, on the council. Um, and it's timely now because we would want to get out the interest survey to grantees in the acceptance letter. It's much more efficient and effective to get information to folks in the letter where they get their money. That tends to be where people pay the most attention. Um, so I, I would I would propose that we again allocate twenty five hundred for that, and and so maybe we should you know just stop there and see if there's any discussion on that topic. So we know the fall block party is definitely happening. They have a date. Yes, there is a date. It's sorry, it's September nineteenth. It tends to go off like like clockwork, except you know briefly there with COVID. But it's been a pretty long standing thing, and I I, I think you know it really was a, a huge success, and we should do it again. So. Um, yeah, I totally agree we should do the full board party in, yeah, more than I keep doing what works. Rachel, you had your hand up? Yes. Um, so the money that we are earmarking for that is something that will go directly to the bid for to, to help support the block party. And the things that you talked about earlier, like the t-shirts and other things that um, ACC provided, that's additional well, to the, that amount? Or? So I think... Think of it this way, as far as some of those um, materials that we provided, I guess, I don't, I don't know, I guess technically they come out of those kinds of funds, but they're also coverable by admin funds. And we won't have that repeat expense to the same extent again next year. Because for instance, we have this, I guess what they're called, sandwich board signs, and it's just printing out posters or stuff to put there, right? We have enough t-shirts for next year. Um, still so those those expenses don't need to be incurred again um matt right. so, you speak to the to the money to the bid i mean i liked how we did it this year as far as it specifically supported having the stage and having the presence and having the space as, as was my understanding yeah yeah it's, it's for the stage rental rachel okay um so there is there is something else that I, I kind of want to talk about um, emerging with, but it, but it's a it's a different group and I don't we don't have a, a date and we don't have clear locked in commitments yet, but I, I want to put it on people's radar. Um, that is the um, that is the Amherst Rec Department. So I sent everybody an email a week or two ago. Rec is looking for volunteers at their craft fair. Uh, Winterfest is a really positive thing that the rec department does. It's a series of events, artsy and arts and crafts and outdoorsy, um, family friendly, but also, you know, for, for people of all ages. Um, and the craft fair in particular, she is, she had, as last time I talked to her, she had um, over 50 people express interest in tables at the craft fair. She was charging a very small fee. I think it was under $20 to host a table. And um, it's going to be a big event. You know, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I volunteered to support it, and Julianne and I will uh, connect about getting the table materials so that those can be there, and we can get out the word on the Cultural Council. Um, but I also just want to say that, you know, Becky has expressed interest in picking up this spring block party piece. 
And because she works for the town with the rec department, you know, she is able to, for example, book, um, you know, book a book a public park or a public location and sort of make those things happen pretty smoothly. They don't have a big staff, but they do have some staff. Um, and so if we want to continue to explore the spring into arts um, idea, she's I think she is game to do it and to, and to make it happen. And she is a doer. She'll, she'll go out there and, and actually get it done. And, you know, and she's a full time employee and, and her focus is on community engagement and outreach. Um, so I just I want to put that out there. There's only seventeen hundred dollars left from that seventy five hundred that I described that, you know, we started with with last year's spring um, into arts activity. But that money might be a good a good source of seed money for for rec. And we wouldn't you know, we wouldn't do anything with that without coming back to the council and talking it through. But I just want to put that in, in folks minds, because I think wherever we can find collaborations with our um, with our public partners, we, we should. I mean, I'll, I'll hop in to say that I think it's key to have someone, as you said, who's someone who has the ability to to book places like that and and can can do these things. Since we're all volunteer over here, um, it really extends, you know, our our ability to to um, you know be part of the community in in a way um, that that's effective and manageable. Is there something that we need or would be ideal to decide tonight, Matt? Um... No, I, I don't think we need to vote. And I actually think we can probably wrap up early. I just, um, I wanted to put it on people's radar because, you know, that is something that we will, I'd like to bring back to the to the council. And in the grant um, award letter, we included a survey and the survey says, do you want to be part of the spring, the fall block party? And it also says, would you be interested in additional showcase opportunities. So thinking about, you know, building a list of folks who would do this with the rec department too. Um, so I just wanted to share that info. Like I said, I think last year's vote covers, you know, the the money, those monies were set aside for block party, for block partying. <laughs> um, and we're able to support, you know, participation in two block parties. Um, and the only other piece that I want to toss out there is, you know, I think we are, we are, we are down one already. Um, and um and so recruiting i think is, is something important um for us and i just want to reemphasize that because eleanor is going to be out of town through this entire spring semester um so between eleanor being out we haven't filled leah's position yet and then kimberly has not come to any meetings she didn't come to any meetings in the grant cycle so i don't think she's gonna be staying on so all of a sudden it feels like we're down three again agreed Yes, Christine. And I ha hate to add on, um, but I'm away for three months. I, I might be able to um, be on meetings. It'll just be really late for me. So I'm here January and February and then March, April and May. I'm gone. Um, and Luckily, I would a lighter time for us anyway. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we will have to really look at being able to you know, confirm ahead of time that we have five. If you know of anyone in the area, Christy, that you're willing to recruit in, please, you know, um, like that goes for all of us. I need to get out of the house more. Meet more people. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, I think that's everything then. Um, I guess, you know, the only... Other update that I'm I'm excited to to share is that um, we looked into um, with the town comptroller starting I guess last summer being able to move to an all digital process for um, completing the grants contracts and getting um, signatures in. So um, we will be setting setting that up for our grantees um, to be able to receive everything in email, e sign it, and return it. Uh, which is is going to make um, the work that Matt and I do administering um, and validating everything much, much easier this year. So um, it's roughly, uh, I guess, around $200 or so annually that comes out of our administrative funds. 
Um, but uh, it will be worth every penny to be able to automate. We'll be able to send in bulk, um, whereas previously uh, we've, we've, you know, sent every single email personally from one of us. It'll still look like it's coming, you know, from us in a personal way, but we won't have to, you know, um, do it the hard way. If Matt, do you have anything else to add? No, I just want to make sure anybody who doesn't know, I mean, the sheer volume of paperwork that we've been processing and really Julian has been processing, it's going to be such a huge change for, for future councils to have the, the, um, setting this precedent now. And I think we set this precedent, we prove that it works and then, you know, we'll never, we'll never go back. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. hats off to you. That was really great work. Thank you. And I'm, I'm just glad the town would agree. Of course, it makes sense that they would, they, they use, um, e-signatures officially, you know, for government business as well. So we've, we've, uh, arranged with them to comply to, to their needs. So I am looking forward to it. I have nothing else. Does anyone else have anything else today? Happy New Year to everyone, by the way. Same to you. Thanks again for everything. Thank you all for your service. Okay, with that, I believe we can conclude. Um, thank you for joining us this evening. And um, here's to uh, wrapping up the fiscal year 2024 grant cycle. No kidding. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a great night. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.